we're back out here at the Big Lake once again, and today we're wondering if this little guy right here truly is the future of bass fishing. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today we're talking about a brand new rig that just hit the market. And by all indications, it's going to be taking the bass fishing world by storm. Now, I was fortunate enough to get my hands on a few of these right when they came out. And that's what today's video is going to be about. I put that particular rig through its paces. I did things with it that it was not intended to do, and I pushed it to its very limits just to see how good it is and just to see if I could get it to break. Because if you want to know how good something really is, you have to push it to its limits. You got to see where those boundaries are. And that's what I did with this particular rig. Now, if you're familiar with hover strolling, then you're going to be familiar with this. See, hover strolling, this is where you take a jig hook, something you would use to make your own uh, jigs in a lead mold whenever you're pouring your own jigs, and a 60 degree or a 90 degree line tie on the hook, and you would hook your worm or you'd hook your plastic in such a way as to cause that bait to glide, almost like you're rigging a tube jig. As a matter of fact, that's what it reminds me of, like you're rigging a soft plastic, very much like a tube, and the gliding action that you're getting from it is very familiar to me. It's very similar to a tube. Now the problem with this hover strolling technique is that you can go through quite a bit of tackle because they require nail weights, they require um, specific types of hooks, and they require plastics. And if you tear it up, well, you've got to start all over and that can get expensive, especially if you're using tungsten nail weights and expensive plastics. Each rig can run you, I don't know, five, six bucks or even more. So, I mean, they can be expensive as some higher dollar jigs. So a new company called Core Tackle, which is run by Johnny Schultz of Fish the Moment and Bass Fishing Declassified and pro angler Matt Steffen. I will link their channels in the description below. Now, full disclosure, yes, I'm a member of Matt's channel, yes, I follow his pro career, and yes, I follow his YouTube. I'm probably what you would call a buddy. However, this is not going to be a biased review. Matt would not get any use out of this if I were just giving him softballs and buttering him up. So, I really, really put this rig through the test. So, it's not just going to be a fluff piece. And there is some bad, but I'm going to tell you right off the bat, there is a lot a lot of good here. So let's start off with the rig itself. And it's this thing. This is the 364th size. And basically it looks like if a tube jig and a nail weight had a baby. Now it's got this little wire brush guard. We'll get to that in a minute. But it's also got a 90 degree line tie. Now from my understanding is that this rig was meant to be fished in clear water in hard bottom areas. Not a lot of vegetation. So what did I do? Well I took it out here to the big lake. Mucky bottom, lots of vegetation, and the water today is stained. So absolutely the opposite of the conditions that I think this was designed for. That's a good start. So I tied it up and I started fishing with it. And I fished with this thing. I've been fishing with this thing for days now. This is not just a couple hours. I have put several, several hours and three or four fishing trips into this now, fishing just this particular rig. As a matter of fact, I still have this one tied on and you can see you know, it's looking pretty raggedy. That wire uh, wire guard there is just bent to pieces. The worms all bent up. I've gone through a whole pack of these worms because the water is really stained, which is odd for this lake this time of year, but that's the water we have. So this is what I put on these dream sickle orange uh, stick baits that I make myself. This is something that I pour myself. And I went through quite a few of these. I went through a whole pack of these. And the reason I did, well, we'll get to that in just a little bit. But first and foremost, how was the action on this thing in the water? What does it look like? Well, it looks really good. It looks enticing. It looks very, very lifelike. Again, it's very reminiscent of a tube presentation. It floats down. It kind of has a little spiral, a little bit of glide to it. It's random. It doesn't do the same thing every time. So that I found to be very, very appealing. Now, the second thing about it is, and this is something that is big, big points with me is, well, this thing skips as good 
as a wacky rig. You heard me right. This thing skips back up under brush like a wacky rig, better than a wacky rig, better than a fluke. This thing skips exceptionally well. I'll show you that. Let's go look at it on the video. All right, we're working this hover rig, and I know this thing looks a little worse for wear today because we have been, I mean, we've been working it. I mean, just, we've got a little, boy, that thing just skips so easily. I really like how it skips. Boy, even sitting down, I can skip this thing so well. I I did not expect to be able to skip this thing as well as it skips, but, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. It reminds me so much of the Nako rig. Now, the rig holds together pretty good. I have to adjust it from time to time, but I am skipping it. That's why, and I just got to put the cat back over the top. So it skips really good, easily, sometimes almost too easily. That's great. And I'm putting it in places it was certainly not designed for. And I'm working it through thick vegetation and I'm putting it under brush and I'm not having any problems. And I've lost one rig in the water and that was my fault, not the hook's fault, because I was fiddling around with the trolling motor. I made one move, wrong move, made my little boat spin around and there was a little metal signpost that was in the water and I got hung up on it. I couldn't get it off and it just broke off. So that was me. That was not anything to do with how it was fished or anything, but there it is. Of the ones that I have, I'm now down one. However, the skipping part, I found that to be really, really surprising. Now, I used it with several different types of baits. I put a pit boss on there, I put a structure bug on there, and I put a craw fatty on there. But the one that I settled on that I particularly liked the most was the stick bait. The stick bait gave me the action I was looking for, and like I said, it was able to skip it quite easily. Now, did it catch fish? Oh boy, it caught fish. Of all the fish that I caught this weekend, the hover rig was my main number one producer. I caught by far 80, 90% of the fish that I caught this weekend was on that hover rig. And well, you can see on the video here that I've got, it was putting it in places it was not designed to go. I treated it like a NACO rig. That's how I fished it. I fished it like I was fishing a NACO rig. I slid it up under the cover and I was getting bit. It was really great. They, I mean, and they were inhaling it too. It wasn't just sheepish little bites. I was getting knocked. Take a look at the video and you see what I mean. So basically I'm treating it almost like a NACO rig right now. That's basically what I'm doing is just treating it like a NACO rig. I got a whole bunch of sunscreen on today. That just looks really good. That just looks really good. We got to get right in there. If I can get... For some reason, I have a wing knot I need to pick out. Where the heck did it let go of my fingers? All right, I got it. I got it. My end. Yeah, I'm in the bush. No, I got a fish, a good fish. Come on, you. I got a good fish. All right. Matt, Stefan, eat your heart out, buddy. On that hover rig. I barely had him, but there it is. He bent the snot out of the keeper. But a nice two pound bass. Please tell me I was rolling. A nice two pound bass on that. Beautiful little fish. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. All right. 
on the hover rig. I want to get right back in that corner right there. Watch me slide this dude in there. Watch. Boop, boop, boop. <clears throat> They're kind of just hanging out in this area for a second. I'm going to make one more cast. Actually, I'm going to make a couple more casts. I'm going to make a cast right there. Ah, got him! Ooh, that's another nice one. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's another nice one. Come here, you. Slung the worm off. Does the hover rig catch fish? Yes, yes it does. Yes, the hover rig catches fish. Another beautiful little two pounder. Gorgeous eyes, gorgeous fish. Nice buck male. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. There he goes. Now I hear you tapping away at your keyboards already. If this thing's so miraculous, what are some of the bad things? What are some of the detractions? Well, for me, again, bear in mind, I was fishing this thing probably not like it was designed to be fished, but for me, this right here, this wire guard, is not needed. It's pretty much useless. Um, on the rig that I have that's still tied up, it's all, it's all bent it gets in the way, so I just never cut it off. A more stout weed guard, a version for a shallow water vegetated fishery, would really be nice sometime down the road. I know right now, core tackle is just getting their feet under them. They're just hitting the ground running, so there's not a lot of options for what they can and can't do with what they have. But down the road, I would like to see a more stout wire guard. And I would also like to see a version that has maybe a 60 degree line tie rather than the 90 so I can draw it through the slop just a little bit better I think that might be helpful as a matter of fact if we could take the weed guard and move it to the other side of the line tie up to the top here I think that would be the ticket I think that would be great because that line tie right there that's what's grabbing the slop that 90 degree angle just like on a Ned rig so I expected that it did happen it wasn't terrible but if I were to change anything, that's what I would change. All right, so how do we rig this thing up? How are we working it? Well, you take your hover rig, right? And I have to bend that line tie out of the way a little bit. And we're gonna take, when we're rigging our worm, we're gonna start a little ways down, not at the top, but about, I don't know, a quarter inch down. And we're trying to be straight, and we're gonna bring it down, just like we would, thread it over. And then when you get to your point, you pop it out. Then all you got to do is pull it up over your end of your weight, and there you go. You thread it up nice and neat. Now, it does take a little bit of practice, and sometimes it can look a little bit ugly, but with a little bit of practice, you'll get a little bit faster at it, especially if you've got a worm that's got a little bit of grease on it. And then you just tie it on. Whenever I'm tying this on, I'm using a Palomar knot whenever I've got this tied on. Now, as far as what I'm using for my gear, this is a finesse spinner. This is spooled with 10 pound braid is my main line. And I've got like an eight to 10 foot, 10 to eight pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. And I'm running this on a seven foot medium light uh, spinning rod. This is, this is what I'm using. This, is, uh, this worked really well. I was able to make some really targeted pinpoint casts with this. And that was one of the very high points is how accurate I was able to be with this thing. But that's, this is the gear that I'm running it with. And this is what worked for me. So there you have it. Matt Stuffins Hover Rig. Did I like it? Oh yeah, I loved it. It passed my review with flying colors. And bear in mind, I put this thing through the ringer. I tried my best to break it. And I fished it in a way it probably wasn't meant to be fished. It worked out excellent for me. I'm going to be using them more and more. Now, on the website right now, it's probably about four to six weeks when you buy them before you get them because they're such high demand. You will be seeing copycats of this. And before long, these things are going to be flooding the market. Get your hands on these as soon as you can. I would really recommend it. They're not expensive at all. I, th I think a pack was $5.99 for a pack, which compared to a lot of the other rigs that you're getting, compared to just some hooks that you buy. And like I said, 
It skipped good. I was accurate with it. It went places it wasn't designed to go. And the number one thing was I was catching fish. So there is that. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.